Hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to Solution Sunday because the soul is the solution. Welcome to Soul. I am Lisa Warner. I am the creator of Solution Sunday. I'm the author of The Simplicity of Self-Healing and I show you how to connect to your soul to help your body heal, to bring all parts and pieces of you back together as one healthy, happy whole. And today we are going to talk about the power of play. Why is play so important? Why is having fun <laughs> a top priority? And we are here with my good friend, Christine Baker, who is a recovering perfectionist. We're gonna find out all about what that is and why having fun is so important. Christine, welcome to Solution Sunday. Oh, hello, Lisa. Thank you so much for having me with you today. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> Yay, so recovering perfectionist, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, um, well, as you know, when I was trying to share a little information in preparation for this, I just kept coming to this, like, write a sentence, get a couple words out. How do I tell Lisa and her audience who I am and what I do and all the things? And I just could not get it perfect. And then it finally occurred to me, well, that is that old programming. Wow, good. So now we have another opportunity for healing. <laughs> there we go. So, <laughs> that is the recovering part. So perfectionist for a very long time, everything had to be a certain specific exact way or just wasn't good enough. And if it wasn't good enough, it's not happening. Um, and, you know, a lot of us live with that uh, programming, right? A lot of us have that or some to some degree for various reasons. And I think it was in college when I finally started to um, break that habit. I finally saw it for what it was, which was not helpful <laughs> and actually keeping me from being who I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. um, and the first thing that I did I started wearing my earrings mismatched. So you might notice that I have uh -huh. I made these. So they're slightly different, but they go together, but they're different. So in college, that was when I started. I said, I'm going to intentionally try being imperfect and taking imperfect action and seeing how far that can get me. Uh, so it was a little thing, but it was so huge and, and so important and so impactful for my start <laughs> um, that it was really powerful. And so yeah, so that's where that came in. And that's, to me, that was kind of fun because that's an expression, right? You know, we wear clothes and jewelry and things as expressions of ourselves. And what if we can express ourselves in a fun way that is more true to us than the programming that currently governs a lot of our thinking and a lot of our actions? That's, that's, the, that's the start. That's where it started. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. I love that. Like, I love that you were able to recognize these patterns you know just as a precursor to this show and because this show is all about healing and healing comes from recognizing our patterns and clearing out the patterns everybody thinks that that healing is about fixing the body but the body is expressing our patterns yes. uh, there's nothing wrong with our bodies but when we have, when we're carrying around these self-limiting patterns, that's the problem. Like that's where we need to be looking. Yes, exactly. I couldn't have said it better. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly it. And I, and I love the, the expression part. That's what I'm working to create, to help people to embrace their own expressions of who they are um, and all the ways that that shows up. And we are healthier when we do that when we share who we are with ourselves and then with the world we become that lighter brighter version of ourselves that we're all here to be right i mean truly that's that's what we're here to be that light for the world so that's how that happens <laughs> exactly yeah. so now it looks like there's a whole lot of self-expression going on behind <laughs> you in the background are those your paintings Yes, these are my paintings. I kind of refer to them as my friends, as silly as that might seem, um, because the colors and the movement, uh, a lot of them I did with my hands, literally, or whatever was around. I don't often use a brush, but sometimes. Um, and yeah, they, they were expressions of what I was feeling or what I was 
um, experiencing or maybe you know having met another person um, they just this is what came out this is what needed to be expressed and to be shared and so uh, yeah I, I finally got my wall put together here and I'm so happy I literally feel the room just feels incredibly different because I now have these expressions and these colors and these frequencies around me that are just love 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 and all the things that I was going through and all of the um, choices I was making and the expressions that I needed to get out they're here they're with me <laughs> so this is absolutely one really fun way to express uh, and to have fun right with yourself painting but it's not the only way exactly you know there's something really really powerful about um about putting something on paper or canvas you know so that we can see what it is that we're thinking or feeling and um you know there's a lot of clarity that can be gained from absolutely. that process absolutely i totally agree and that reminded me um we were talking earlier we were talking about filters right putting it down on paper and so i have an example of um one of these filters it's quite old <laughs> it's been and i don't know it might it might show backwards but it says your choice um, and then my choice was to be grounded and present all day. So this was a message and a choice that I needed to filter my um, my daily life through for a good season. And so I wrote it on my coffee filter so that I would remember very easily, oh, it's a filter. I am putting this filter in place and now my day will be filtered through this. So for me, that was a fun way because I also love coffee. So, you know, if you love something, you're having fun with it. Um, so it was a really fun way to just have a gentle reminder. And then people would be like, what is that? I had it in my drawer, but you know, sometimes people would come in and there's, I'm talking and I'm getting things. What is that filter? Why do you have that in your drawer? <laughs> so then we could talk about filters and programming and how, you know, those filters can be a good first step of deprogramming, of being aware of what the things we're saying to ourselves or the way that, you know, man, everybody just doesn't like me. Da, da, da. Oh, if everybody doesn't like you, then maybe there's something in place that's more of a common denominator that could be adjusted <laughs> so you could see what's really going on so it's just a, a fun starting point a, a fun little way to um to start breaking down the programming uh, i love that that's beautiful um barb says good morning ladies i started painting two years ago um like one a year i found i love it and i'm so going to make a wall to hang more paintings so you're inspiring our audience already christine <laughs> <laughs> so glad to hear that barb oh that's wonderful <laughs> <laughs> that's beautiful and i love your idea about the the filter so say more about filters what do we how do you perceive filters so filters it you know programming there's a lot of ways to deprogram, right? There's a lot of ways. We know that there's so many ways to heal and healing work, like you said, it's really not so much about the body, which is the expression of what's going on as we heal these different layers. Um, but the programming, subconscious mind, these messages and things that have come in or that we've accepted, that we've been told are the truth of how we should exist or or what, you know, the shoulds. If there's a should, just throw it out the window. That That's already a, a first red flag. We yeah. don't shoot ourselves anymore. Exactly. <laughs> it's not helpful. Um, but I like the filters because it's a gentle, easy way to just start that invitation to yourself to think about, well, do I have these things running around in my head that I don't know that I have them running around in my head? Um, because it can be hard to deprogram. It can be hard when we're in a world where everything is just telling you this is how you exist and you have a sense that, well, I think there's something maybe over here and they're like, nope, this is where you exist. So if you're willing to have that conversation with yourself, a nice, easy, gentle way might be that what if thing. Well, what if there is something else that I can filter my day through? What if there could be? Well, that's a lot easier than going, there's absolutely something I can do. I'm going to figure it all out right now. That's the perfectionist thing, right? I'm going to write a list. I'm going to have an outline. It's going to be organized. I'm going to have it all down and then I can do it. I throw it out the window. <laughs> it doesn't help. <laughs> Start where you are. Your filter doesn't have to be any particular shape. This is my invitation, get a coffee filter, whatever it looks like, find your favorite color pen or marker or crayon or whatever, and write down what you wanna start filtering your day through and do it for a day, do it for a week, give yourself a month, whatever it looks like, just start where you are <laughs> and give yourself something new to filter your day through, to filter yourself through, your life through. And eventually 
as you get rid of these layers of things that are not yours, you're going to find yourself. You're going to find that light, bright space inside of you that's just waiting to come out of the box. <laughs> exactly. It's like all of humanity is waiting to come out of the box right now. You yes. know? And it's just, it's really a matter of seeing the box that we've been yes. placed in. And, Absolutely. you know, to recognize, like, wait a second, you know, ever since childhood, we're told that, well, this is the way it is. Why? Why is Why? it this way? <laughs> Why does it have to be this way? This way is really pretty unpleasant. You know, pay your taxes, you know, follow the <laughs> rules, do the right thing. You know, <laughs> like, never do that thing that you love to do. <laughs> you got to work 40 hours a week or more. The more you work, the better it's going to be. <laughs> and then what is it? <laughs> and is it ever better? Who says? Like, <laughs> who set this program up? Mm. Like, wait a second. We don't really need to live this way. No. You know, as humanity, we, we are creator beings. We can create anything we desire to create, literally. But we're just taught that this is what you have to create. These are the parameters you have to create inside the box. Don't create out there. Don't look out there. That stuff doesn't exist. Create in here. And then we just follow all the rules. We get sent <laughs> to school and we're taught all the rules of how the box works. And then we're taught a whole bunch of other rules and a whole bunch of other distraction things. So like, we're really so confused by the time we're done with school, we have no idea what we're really supposed to do. We think we know what we're supposed to do and go to college and get your degree so that you can earn more money. Mm -hmm. Who's and then all to what end? <laughs> right? We're not having fun as humanity, as societies, we're not having fun. Yeah. So the only way we can possibly change this pattern is for each and every one of us to reclaim our own ability to have fun and start empowering others around us to start having fun as well. And to start seeing that those rules are placed there by people who really don't have our best interest at heart. They don't want us to have any fun whatsoever. So why don't we really look and see if we just take those people out of the picture, like not let them keep making all the rules for us. And we just start making our own rules that are in harmony with the, the planet and with each other and you know giving each other dignity and honor and respect giving the planet that as well like this could be a really awesome fun place to live <laughs> exactly oh i love it i love it and see how light and bright you get talking about it i mean that's 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 tuning in and embodying that fun feeling and, and embodying that reality, which can be any of our reality. Like you said, we, we choose it. We choose to start to be aware. We, we choose to see the container. We choose to see it for what it is. We choose to, yeah, to make our own, to make our own reality. Um, I almost said paint eyelashes on the elephant. When I was a kid, that's a phrase my mom uses <laughs> because when I was a kid um, in school, we'd have coloring books, you know, they have the color and the lines and here's your instructions and this and that. Well, I was often recreating my drawing a little bit. So my elephants had toenails and eyelashes and whatever else I wanted to put on them because they didn't have them for some reason. And I didn't understand why. Of course, elephants have eyelashes. Did this coloring book person just not know that elephants have eyelashes? So as silly as that is, as a kid, my drawings were always much more elaborate and just a little different. And so my mom used to joke, um about that christine you're putting the eyelashes on the elephant again <laughs> which could be taken as okay perfectionist now you're making everything da, da, da. or for me it was an expression of my reality in my reality i knew that elephants had eyelashes therefore i gave them eyelashes i can see that that's what it was supposed to be i didn't need anyone else to tell me or put a box on my elephant because i already knew what my elephant was supposed to look like 
So it's that same kind of process of being willing to create exactly what it is you're actually wanting and not just accepting what's being put in your life or at your life, uh, depending on, you know, where you're living and what's going on. <laughs> right. Exactly. It's like, if we are creator beings, which we are, and we can create anything, why are we not focusing on our dreams and focusing on what it is we would actually love to be experiencing? And so we can create that. You know, we are just so taught to focus on what is and follow the rules that we just fail to look beyond the what is and the current rules that aren't fun at all. Right, right. And we don't, a lot of us don't even know where to start with what we want or even have a clue what it is we're really dreaming about or what it is we want to create. I mean, how, how many, I, I went through that, that lack mentality of, you know, the not enoughness and well, I don't have enough of this, so I can't really think about what I actually want because until I get enough of this, that's not even a that's not even a reality for me, or it's not even something to waste time considering, right? Because I don't have enough. Lack mentality is such a huge block, right? Oh. And it keeps us in it keeps us in scarcity, it keeps us in the dark, it keeps us in the box. Yes. And you know, I've met some really beautiful people recently, and one of my favorite takeaways was, you know, you are enough. Always, period. That's it. <laughs> you are enough. And if you are enough, then you have enough, you be enough, you're light enough, and you just keep owning that. And you start to see all those layers of shrouds and darkness and the not enoughness start to, to sift out. And they suddenly you see yourself as you really are. This enough beautiful being that is here to express and create your life and to support others expressing and creating their lives and dreaming <laughs> and even dreaming together. <laughs> and supporting each other dreaming and encouraging each other to dream i mean that's remarkable we've lost that too and there's you know beautiful new communities coming up and really empowering that in people and yeah that's that's the world that i want to live in <laughs> that's the world that i want to create exactly yes mm. you know when we when two or more are gathered together magic and miracles start to happen the energy starts to form itself more quickly and more cohesively yes you know it's um, like i love that i love that you and i have been connected through dream weaving to in these communities where we gather together and we live by the four agreements and the nine alignments and we start to really create new ways of being on this planet and we encourage each other to dream and to start focusing on the futures that we want to create yeah. and you know <laughs> when we do that it's incredible how quickly our manifestations start to happen you know once we start opening up and we have fun and we start seeing that we're actually supported in our dreams and you know that it's okay to be who we are and to express <laughs> ourselves freely like the the manifestations just happen because we're so in alignment we're so in the flow that it becomes easy to create and it starts to be easy to live on this planet and it starts to be easy to have fun yes, <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> Exactly. I so agree. Thank you for sharing about uh, about the dream weaving. It has been remarkable so far and absolutely has opened up even more fun. Um, you know, the things that have already started to manifest and getting to travel and see friends and having more fun than I think I've had in such a long time. And it just keeps building. It's like fun. Fun has become exponential. And why not? Why should it just be a limited, you know, you're only allowed to have fun this way. And if you need to start that way, that's fine. Give yourself 10 minutes of fun a day and, and see what happens. It can transform and you'll probably end up wanting more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give yourself a starting point. 10 minutes, that's it. Cut yourself off if you if you can uh, and see what happens. But it's just been exponential to see to see where it can go. And it's contagious, you know, when you're with someone who's having fun and they're just laughing and smiling and, and just beaming that light. I mean, you can't help but smile and at least giggle a little to yourself, if not join in fully with whatever, <laughs> whatever they're doing. <laughs> so that is, that's the beautiful nature and community 
of fun and embodying fun and using it as a beautiful manifestation creation tool to create this beautiful life that you want, <laughs> that we're meant to be here living, enjoying and thriving in. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. You know, I had been, I had been one of the ones that was following the rules, trying to work with what is and trying to figure out the whole, how am I supposed to make, earn a living and make money? And yeah. it's like, why, you know, why am I doing all of this hard work and, you know, slaving away? I was working, you know, from six in the morning till 11 at night, a lot of the time. Oh, goodness. I mean, it, and then like on the days off, then, you know, you got laundry and grocery shopping. And it was like, oh my God, like I didn't, I was really, truly not having any fun in my life. Some, I mean, you know, some of it was enjoyable, but it wasn't really just out there having fun. And cause it was all about earning a living and, yeah. you know, it was, I was so deeply engrossed in that lack mentality that I could never keep up. I could never get ahead. I could never just relax and enjoy myself. And, you know, so I ended up facing cancer and it was like, oh my gosh, once I started really on my healing journey, I realized, oh my gosh, that's not what's happening to my body at all. My body is reflecting the fact that I am really living a very miserable existence. Mm. It's like the miserable existence is what I need to address. It's not my body's fault. Like <laughs> my body is doing what it can to survive. Like it's doing exactly what it needs to do given the circumstances that I've provided these meager, grim circumstances of, oh my God, what am I going to do? I'm not enough. How am I going to, like, we have to address that. That's the issue that the not having fun is the issue. <laughs> it's like the only issue that we need to actually look at. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> Like yes, people I, think, I think I'm crazy, but like it really is true, people. <laughs> like, it's so true. <laughs> Incredibly so. And you really will notice how much more you come to life when you let yourself have that fun. You know, sometimes sometimes we're ready to have fun, but then we don't quite know what to do with it. Or okay, like I feel like I really want to have fun. And maybe you even express a little burst of fun. And then maybe you're like, oh gosh, I shouldn't have done that. Right. And then you go, oh no. Now I feel foolish because I expressed something and, and, and they didn't receive it well, or the world isn't ready for that. Or, right. You know, then we have these, these other statements that float in and then you're like, oh, well, I, I guess I can never do that again. Cause that was just scary and makes me feel weird. And right. So then you have this whole other box <laughs> of things, but if you have expressed something like you're, you're more than ready to have fun. You just need to get with the right group of people to celebrate that fun and, and expand that fun to be with you in that fun. <laughs> So that's like the next step. If you are ready to express fun, then you got to get with the people that are flowing fun. <laughs> I called my prep for today. I called it the fun flow. That's what I was working on. Just kind of like, what does fun mean to me? And, and how do I do that? And how would I encourage others to do that? And I'm like, I think I need to make a little mini class or something. This, this is really fun to play with. I'm like, I think that's now on my list. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. That must be something that comes out of this because you're right. It is so incredibly important. And I never would have been someone to say fun is important and vital and necessary for your growth. See that finger? That's that old me. That, that is, whew, forget it. Now it's a magic wand and fun is the best. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Precisely. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's medicine. <laughs> I think that's a great idea. You know, it, it's really, really sad on one hand that we have to create classes yeah. to teach people how to have fun again, but it is so vitally important. Yeah, it's like, that's what I'm realizing. You know, we've just been educated out of our ability to have fun, out of our ability to enjoy our lives and be ourselves. Exactly, exactly. And we do, we need, sometimes we need support. Sometimes we just need someone to come alongside in our journey and say, Hey, you know what? It is okay. It is okay. 
You know that feeling, that smile that you almost made, but then you hit it? Let's talk about that. Why did you hide it? What made you pull back? I remember one time when I was a kid, we went to um, we went to a show. It was like at a stadium. I don't remember the details, but there was a clown who was doing a show and he asked for some volunteers. And like my little kid self was like instant. So I mean, my hand shot up probably just before everybody else. And then he called on me and then I was like, oh, I can't do that. Oh, I and I, I pulled my hand back down and he tried to offer again. And my dad tried to encourage me. And I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't, <laughs> you know, and I don't know where that came from, but I, I just was like, I, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't get up there. I can't, I can't do it. I don't know why. And I don't know exactly what prompted me to just shrink into that little scared self of like, oh gosh, I could, but, but I can't. And I think that's where people are with fun, right? It's like, I want to have fun. I really, really want to. And then they have the opportunity and it's like, oh my gosh, that's really scary. I don't know what that looks like. <laughs> and so you need someone to just be like, Hey, it's okay. And if you want to sit in this, I call it the mud puddle. If you want to sit in the mud puddle for a minute, that's totally fine. I'll sit down with you. We can just sit there. <laughs> be where you are, right? Like have that moment, have that that fear, that scarcity, and and see it for what it is. And then when you're ready, we can we can start to step out of the mud puddle and 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 into that beautiful light and into the world and expression of fun and lightness and brightness. So I think that's that's really important is is building that community. And that's that's been a hard thing. I mean, I've I've done the lone wolf thing most of my life. I'm like, I'm independent. I can take care of myself. I don't need people. Other people need people. I encourage you to do that. I don't need people. But that's not really true. <laughs> we do all need community. And letting someone come alongside you is that first step to building a community, is being vulnerable and being willing to have at least one person hold your hand. <laughs> right. That's, that's a good starting point. Yeah. You know, last yeah. winter, a, a small group of us decided to get together you know just in person had a little potluck and we just realized like oh my gosh like it's so much fun to just get together <laughs> and we made a commitment right then and there to do it every single week and it's like we get together every single weekend and we go do something you know whether we go outside and hike or swim or play or or have a, a movie night you know like whatever it is get together and play music you know like we just gather and have fun and you know that was that's been a huge part of my my own healing story as far as money is concerned the more fun i started to have in my life the easier my life became and the money just started flowing like it was just it became easier like i didn't have to do things for it you know like of course you know i'm i have my business however you know people start showing up they're like hey you know i kind of want what she's got you know let me <laughs> learn some stuff you know let me yeah. learn how to heal myself let me learn how to set myself free and start enjoying my life a little more yeah and, you know, so everything just starts to build on each other. So true. <laughs> okay. And this summer, I decided that I was going to make play my priority <laughs> over work. And so I put all of my stuff on three days, you know, my work stuff on three days plus solution Sunday on a different day. And then I have like four days. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday to go out and play and do things. And by putting play as a priority, that just completely shifted everything. And it turned out to be like the greatest summer ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. I love how you created your schedule uh, to reflect the priority of that. That is wonderful. Uh, I'm working on a similar kind of schedule. Um, and my husband right now, he works like Sunday to Thursday. So that already kind of shifts things, which is it's kind of fun. I'm like, well, it's kind of nice having a little bit off the beaten, you know, regular old schedule. Um, but then, you know, for the most part, Friday and Saturday is for us to, yeah, we want to, of course, we've got house stuff we need to do and projects that need to get done. But it's always a priority for one or both days that we do something fun together, whether that's, you know, sitting in the same room and maybe he needs to, to decompress with some video games or something for a little bit while I'm playing with, you know, making jewelry or something like that. It could be something inside together or, you know, going outside, going for a walk, taking our goofy foster pup to her favorite coffee shop to get her little whipped cream treat. 
whatever fun shows up, but we just make it a priority that every week there's at least that specific time. And of course, during the week, you've got lots of moments. Um, but I think it is important to have something planned, something to look forward to, mm-hmm. something to always be looking forward to. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, and to discover new ways of having fun. You know, people are pretty limited. I mean, at least I was on my ideas of what to do to have fun. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like when you haven't been having any fun for a really long time, it's like you don't even really sometimes know where to start. So true. So true. And and there is, I mean, there's a lot of different ways to get at that. You know, for some folks, there's a lot of folks that we might be talking to that there, you, you probably have that thought of like, I don't, like you said, I don't even know what is fun. I don't know how to have fun. I don't know what I think is fun. I don't, fun is not even a word that's in my vocabulary, you know? So like to where they would start is maybe a little different than someone who's kind of had a little more laughter or had at least, you know, a couple of nights out with, with friends or, or family. Um, and so, yeah, there's lots of different starting points. And from a recovering perfectionist side, as silly as it might be, one of my one of my intros, um, in addition to making the mismatching earrings, was to find my favorite pen and find like as many colors in that pen as possible and just start using color and using using my fit, choosing a favorite pen and enjoying writing with that pen and everything that I did. As silly as that is, right? That was such a helpful thing. And it actually encouraged a lot of people when I was working in a, you know, working for another person, which I'm no longer working for people. I'm doing my own business, uh, doing my own creative wellness. And so, but when I did work at the office, you know, my favorite pen that was still professional, but my favorite was a navy blue G2 pen, right? Slightly different, wasn't wasn't bright blue, wasn't black. I could use it for regular legal documents and, and all the things I was doing. But it was my it was my pen, and I loved how it wrote, and I loved that the color was not black and not blue; that it was a blend of, of of both. And everyone knew that this was Christine's pen. So if it was left somewhere, or someone walked off with it, oh, that's Christine's pen. Well, then I noticed they all started getting their own favorite pens, and they weren't always G two, right? Everyone has their own preferences, and then their own favorite colors, and so they had their own variations, and it just started to spread. I'm like, that's a little tiny thing you can do. And it starts to spread. That's what fun does. <laughs> it's contagious. <laughs> no matter where it. it starts. So yeah, it, it can be as small or as little as it needs to be, or it can be as expansive. Uh, you know, maybe you just get on group on one day and see what kind of activities are in your area and go, hmm, water skiing, let's try it. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> don't recommend it during the winter, maybe, but <laughs> you never know what's gonna pop up. And and pique your interest, you know, if you don't know off the top of your head, well, expose yourself to some ideas and see what you're drawn to, right? That's another part of that. Yeah, (laughs) and, you know, there's power, so much power in just simply making a choice. Yes. Just choosing to have fun. Yes. Like once, you, you know, people often say, you know, oh, I'd love to go have some fun. I wish it was more fun. I wish I could go find something to do that would be fun. But it's really not making a choice. It's like when you make the choice to make fun and play a priority, then the things that are fun will start to come your way. Yeah. The ideas will start to filter in. The people that are doing fun things will start to be drawn into your reality. Mm. You know, the universe conspires to make our choices come true. So making a really clear conscious choice to begin with is extremely powerful yes. when it comes to fun. Shannon is saying, my fun teachers and guides have been my mom and five kids. I was more serious as a kid and my mom pulled me out of my shell, giving me space to be silly and even now encourages me to be carefree. This is a great conversation. Thank you. Thanks, Shannon, for joining us this morning. We love it. And she also says, yesterday morning, I put together a puzzle and I have not done that in years. I had so much fun. It encouraged me to start putting together puzzles again. (laughs) So good. (laughs) Yay. And Barb says, I found coloring mandalas to be a a fun, relaxing activity. For one thing, playing with the grand girls as well. Nice. (laughs) Yes. Love it. Barb sounds like a a creative, colorful soul. (laughs) Exactly. 
Oh, we wonderful. attract many of those here. <laughs> <laughs> That's good work. Very good work. Yeah. So tell us about your creative healing business. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. Um, so I have a, a, a varied background. I uh, come from psychology, sociology, clinical counseling, functional nutrition, and literally a handful or more of different energy healing modalities. Um, various levels of cert certification and all of that. So all of those things are what I'm drawing in from whenever I'm working with people. And um, it doesn't feel like work. It's really just a lot of fun. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out what to call that. I don't quite have the word to replace it, but for now, fun is excellent. So I'm going to stick with the fun flow. And yeah, so what, what we do together is just work on meeting people where they are so they can get where they're going, right? We're all trying to truly create this life that we want to live and, and be the best, brightest versions of ourselves, whether we're fully cognizant of that or not, that's that's part of why we're here to, to be expressed and to express. Um, and so the, the name of my business is Embracing Expressions, which is to allow those expressions to embrace you and also to embrace all of the expressions in this beautiful planet and the people and the plants and the animals and everything, the rocks, I'm a rock person, <laughs> they're everywhere, to embrace fully all of the expressions of all of these beautiful things, this creation that we're all part of, that that's all a part of who we are. Mm -hmm. And so that looks different for everybody. Some people are coming in with physical concerns. Maybe they're just like, well, my, di my digestion's not working and you know, I don't really care about that other stuff. And it's, that's, maybe they think it's a little out there and that's okay, but can you help me with digestion? Yes, we can work on that. And of course, eventually that conversation is probably gonna lead to that other out there stuff because that's where a lot of this is coming from, right? But we're gonna handle the digestion. We're gonna start where you are and then we're gonna keep on going. We're just gonna keep on walking through this path, this healing journey and see what shows up. And that's, to me, that's that's the point. It's a very multi-dimensional approach because we're multi-dimensional beings, you know? We're not just one thing. We're get physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, dimensional, generational, right? There's all of these different elements that make us who we are. Um, so we just start where you are. And there might be people who are ready to dive in and go, show me the mandala. <laughs> Let's go all in. And we can totally do that too. Um, but yeah, it, it's really just about finding who we are and expressing that and being excited to express it and embracing that. So yeah, that's the, that's the short, short version. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. 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 You know, it's so, the the reason that we are in these states of, dis-ease are because we're not having fun. We're living in this state of constant trauma and upset, watching, you know, fear mongering and war mongering, you know, and all kinds of like really tyrannical, you know, not fun stuff going on out in the world. And we're constantly trying to figure out how we're going to protect ourselves and survive in this you know dystopian reality that's been set up for us and yeah. it's like we should actually be really discovering how to put an end to the dystopian reality and start bringing <laughs> fun back onto the planet how do we start creating heaven on earth because i guarantee you 95 or more percent of this planet want to have fun <laughs> yeah. just people that want to enjoy our lives. We want to enjoy this beautiful planet. Yeah. Look at this planet. Look at the beauty that's available and the diversity that's available. All the adventures that are here to be had. Like people just want to have fun, right? <laughs> Isn't there some song like that? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> See, if we don't allow ourselves to just start having fun, it's not going to happen on this planet. And if we don't start allowing ourselves to have some fun soon, it's definitely <laughs> never going to happen on this planet. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. You're so right. You're so right. And I think I'm absolutely going to create this fun course because this is just, you're exactly right. It's just too important. It just really is that important and, um, and transformative. <laughs> and it's time it's beyond time beyond time for us to have fun and to say yes to say yes to fun 
<laughs> exactly. And just start saying no to the tyrannical garbage Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. You know, just because somebody said so, it doesn't make it so. That's right. You know, that, we have to start phrase, looking at why are we doing these things? Why are we following rules that make no sense and make us unhappy? Yeah. <laughs> like, why are we doing that? We really should take a look at some of that. <laughs> and and if nothing else, this can be an invitation to do that because it is a lot of times it's, um, we feel like we don't have the permission to do that. Like we don't have the permission to have fun. We And whether it's because we're putting it on ourselves or we hear it from a parent's voice or we hear it from a boss's voice or we hear it from a myriad of different voices, right? Because the news, like you were saying, social media, oh my gosh. Right. I haven't done social media for most of my life. This is kind of a new era for me to even be involved online and doing doing things like Zoom and Facebook. And I'm so grateful that it has been most of my life that I haven't been because just being on there, there's you just see so much more. I'm like, this is not that is not the energy that I want to bring into my life. It's not the energy of my reality. And so I, I do have a very strong filter in place that says, nope, <laughs> what you can keep it over there and I will send you love and healing. <laughs> I'm not gonna that is not part of my reality. Um, but there certainly was a time when I was younger that it would have been hard to have that filter in place and to trust that those things aren't gonna come, you know, sneaking in the back door and become part of my programming again. Mm -hmm. um, but this is so important. I have made that choice. It is an all capital. Yes, this is where I'm going. It is not a passive, eh, maybe. And there's, there are no, there are no open windows <laughs> for that kind of self-talk and programming. It is no longer allowed in my life um, because I did make that choice. And so this could be Loki saying, hello, <laughs> this could be that invitation to others to open your eyes a little bit and and make a choice and maybe maybe say yes and eventually you'll your maybe yes can turn into an affirmative yes can turn into an all caps exclamation point yes I'm here to have fun and live my life and be my light <laughs> yeah. Loki gonna come and have fun with us Are you gonna come have fun <laughs> he's like I just had to get my two cents in there he yeah. might come landing on my head we'll see <laughs> Eve says, I find fun in singing and, yeah. and I'm excited to share with you all. I'm going to be a grandma. Ah, Eve, congratulations. congratulations. That's so exciting. <laughs> for you. That'll be fun. That'll be very fun. <laughs> and I also find joy and fun in singing. Um, you know, Loki is a bird for anyone who doesn't know that. If he comes over here, that's why I said he'll fly on my head. And so Loki and I, a lot of times Conyers are known to be very loud birds you don't want to have a loud bird if you have neighbors and this and that and loki and i learned our own language and most of that is sing-songing and silly noises <laughs> so every day i have fun with this goofy little bird i go in and wake him up and we sing songs to wake him up and when we're hanging out in the afternoon if he's getting a little like mom i need your attention and he's eating my earrings and doing these things that he does to say i want some attention if i sing he stops and he just has fun and he dances on my shoulder while we're singing and then he makes his own little noises and you know if, if birds and kids can have such fully present joyful fun in, a, in an instant they can flip it right instantly they can go from oh, to just fun and boisterous laughter right if they can do it we can do it it's in us <laughs> we just have to remember and to choose it yeah exactly yeah and it's the the choosing that's like so 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 important yes you know and and like you said you know we've never been given permission to do any of this stuff we've just been told that we have to follow the rules we have to pay attention we have to concentrate well now we have concentrated ourselves into a gigantic concentration camp on this planet <laughs> Like, this is oh, not yeah. with a can't kind of camp that is fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, yeah. it's like summer camp, this the kind where we are free and we get to get outside and play and have no major rules that we have to follow, that we can just create and express ourselves. Yes. You know, as we're each, from my perspective, we're each 
souls divinely created with unique expressions. We are each the unique expression of creator itself. And we're not meant to be the same as everybody else. Right. We were going to supposed to be the same and we would have all been created exactly the same. <laughs> right? It's oh, like true. we're here to experience all the diversity, the infinite possibilities of this infinite universe that we yes. live in. So there are infinite ways that we can have fun. There are infinite ways that we can express ourselves. We've just been given a box of these are the rules that you have to follow. Says who? Yes. It's way more fun when we start creating our own rules and absolutely start governing ourselves. Like we don't need to be governed. Like right. the people who are doing the governing are not doing a very good job. <laughs> oh, it's not been helpful, and I mean that is been the point to keep everybody in that box. Um, exactly. But yeah, you're, you're exactly right. It's time for us to govern ourselves and to celebrate with each other that freedom that we're choosing for ourselves. You know, exactly. how important it is to, to be with, to be with and around like-minded people, whether they're right in your neighborhood or around, you know, the same town or they're across the world, because now we're connected, we're able to be globally connected. So your, your tribe is out there. They're everywhere. You just have to be willing to say, yes, I'm ready to find them. Yes. I'm ready to have fun. Yes. I'm ready to create my own life. I'm ready to be the light I'm here to be. <laughs> you just say yes. <laughs> exactly mm. like what lights me up is going to be something totally different than what lights you up but we can both be lit up and having fun <laughs> and enjoying our lives and contributing to the planet you you paint much much better than i do <laughs> <laughs> you know so that's one of your gifts i mean this is it's wonderful that we all have these gifts and talents to share. And you can share that with me and you can teach me how to do all of that and have more fun expressing myself. This is why we're all unique. Yes. And John says, if God didn't have humor, he wouldn't have made porcupines look so cuddly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. That's cute. <laughs> Good morning, John. Thanks for joining us today. <laughs> <laughs> I always love John. John's one of the ones that we get to play with this summer from time to time. Oh, that's wonderful. He lives a little couple got couple hours away, but we get to see John from time to time. That's excellent. <laughs> <laughs> so good. So important to have fun. I hope that everyone is uh, thinking about the the ways, big or small, that they can start incorporating more fun into life, whether that's daily or weekly or monthly uh, or all of them, there's different, different things you can be doing, right? Exactly. So what are, so you've got painting and singing with Loki. What are some of your other <laughs> things that you really, really enjoy having fun? Let's start creating a list for people that, that need some, just some inspiration. Absolutely. Um, I do make jewelry. So that's another fun expression for me. And I use uh, lots of different types of materials. And so, uh, and of course the mismatching, that's, that's an intentional choice that helps me remember it stay anchored in that imperfect, you know, action, creating this beautiful, joyous life. So if you, if you have jewelry, or like to make it, um, that, that can be a fun expression. And, you know, even simple things like doing you know, earth, earth thing they call it. I love to just walk around barefoot in my yard, um, but going, you know, actually hiking somewhere, climbing trees. Oh my gosh. If you uh, haven't climbed a tree in a while, yes. you're overdue. Find one with low yes. branches, keep it easy. Uh, just, or hug the tree. If you don't want to climb it, that's okay. Just hug a tree. Oh my gosh. It's, it feels incredible. Right. And trees love to be loved and they love giving. They're very nurturing. Hug a tree. <laughs> it's a great fun. <laughs> Picking flowers, right? I mean, there it could be walking around Lowe's in the flower area, right? I love to just even walk around and look at all the plants and I, I say hello to plants. So I like touch the leaves and I'm like, oh, that one's kind of spiky and this one's really soft. And just like, look at the colors and soak in the frequencies and the fragrances. And um, so, yeah, I, I those are some of my hippie, hippie fun list. 
I love it. Oh my gosh. I can't even tell you how many hours I spent swaying in the top of my maple tree in my front oh. yard in the summers. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, that was definitely one of my happy places. Oh, I love <laughs> it. That tree. I love it. And Barb says fly a kite. That yeah. was super fun when I was a kid. I remember <laughs> flying kites and across the street in the park. That was really fun. So much fun. Yeah. Uh, if you have a water source, I love uh, going to the river, the rivers with the big slab rocks, you know, so you can just make your way out there. It's not technically on the path, but it's in the middle of that beautiful water. The sun's coming in. So you just have all of the all of nature, all of the senses around you, I just get swallowed up by that. And, I make, and then I start singing because that just makes me think of Pocahontas and the Little Mermaid and all the songs that they sing when they're out in nature. And so that's that's one of my, absolutely one of my favorite. <laughs> Bringing oh, nature in. <laughs> mine too, for sure. I love the water, love swimming and diving and going to the bottom of the lake and <laughs> water skiing and sailing and boating and kayaking and uh, so much fun can be had on the water yes. being at the ocean and yeah. just floating or body surfing or surfing or seeing the went to the ocean a couple weeks ago on long island we saw the whales off long island it's like oh wow so wow. magical that's incredible that was fun and <laughs> you know we I, I when i went to long island i went to visit some some friends there are four of us that have been getting together since 2012 you know first we got together just like virtually and then we started gathering at, at our friend's house on Long Island and we hadn't been together in a long time. And uh, so we had a little reunion and the four of us got back together and oh my gosh, talk about fun. <laughs> wow. We were up until 3.30 in the morning playing music and singing and dancing and telling stories. Oh. And it was just so much fun laughing oh my heavens we hadn't laughed like that in ages <laughs> so much fun just simple oh, little things yes you know just free fun <laughs> yes exactly fun doesn't have to mean an event or expensive i mean like i said fun could literally be finding your favorite color pen and every day writing with that pen at least you know at least once or during some specific activity um, or you know youtube has sing-along playlist and karaoke playlist. My husband and I did that the other the other week. We just decided, hey, let's just see what shows up. And we each had, you know, I have lots of different rocks. So we each had a rock as a microphone and we're just singing along to the, the playlist that showed up. <laughs> because why not? So exactly. you can have fun cooking. You can have fun, I mean, doing yeah. anything. Anything can be fun if you're willing for it to be fun. If you're willing it, to find that little spark in it that that makes you feel alive and light up when you're doing it. <laughs> right exactly you know and the thing is that fun flows living life force energy through our bodies it, out into the world we're expanding when we have fun our energy is moving outward and we're imprinting the world with our light we're shining our light we're actually lit oh. up, having fun, <laughs> smiling, feeling good when we're having fun. This is like the natural flow of energy. When we're following the rules and doing the right thing, our energy starts to shut down and we lose the spark and we just start living in survival mode, concentrating on what we're supposed to do. Yes. <laughs> it's completely, totally different energies. It's complete. Yes, you're exactly right. And when we shut Amazing. our energy down, it's like turning off the flow and we don't have living life force energy moving through our bodies anymore. And then we wonder why we don't feel well. And then we start wondering what's wrong with my body? <laughs> well, it doesn't have any living life force energy moving through it. That's what's wrong with your body. <laughs> You're not having any fun. You're not excited or enthusiastic about anything. 
and you're living in this state of depression and doubt and uncertainty and woe is me and Low by that's time. literally what's wrong with your body there's nothing wrong with your body your body is showing you where you have cut off the flow of fun <laughs> <laughs> that's it <laughs> oh in summary <laughs> that is exactly it that's beautiful right? well said if you just like i know people are but you gotta go to the doctor my doctor says this mm. When was the last time your doctor said, get out of my office and go and have some fun? <laughs> you know, you've got a great doctor when they say, get the hell out of here, go have some fun. <laughs> no kidding. No kidding. <laughs> I love it. I'm curious if anyone has a doctor who might have said that. I know some chiropractor doctors who would say something like that. You need to go loosen up. You need to go have some fun. You need to go laugh, you know. They got, they've got the, the mindset, but there's, I couldn't tell you if I knew of any other doctor who would even think that way, right? <laughs> Much less encourage their patient to go do that. <laughs> exactly. Because they're, they're focused, they're tunnel focused on finding out what's wrong so they can prescribe the right pill for what's wrong. Well, if you're looking for what's wrong, you're going to find something wrong because that's what you're looking for. Like right. you have the assumption that there's something wrong. So you will, will look until you find something that matches your description of what's wrong. But exactly. if you start to realize there's literally nothing wrong and there's an energy flow problem that suddenly you have shut down the flow of energy, like if you start looking where the actual solution is the yeah. healing happens all by itself our bodies are designed to literally heal themselves exactly exactly like for free it does it all on its own <laughs> exactly right no waiting no permission no copay no <laughs> appointment necessary <laughs> just open up that flow of energy and start yeah, yes. actually living mm. And your body will do the rest. And if you don't know how to do that, well, there are people who can help. Exactly. <laughs> right? You're not sure how to do that, or it feels like it's overwhelming, or you don't have a clue where to start. There are people who are here to help. There are a lot of beautiful light workers on this amazing planet who are around. And if you open your eyes, I'm sure you'll see them. And if any of you know anyone who needs that, I mean, Lisa is amazing i'm doing this work as well there are they're everywhere they're just everywhere so don't be afraid to reach out and exactly say, yeah. so christine how do people reach out and find you yes um well i am brand new and i'm brand new to social media so right now uh, a direct email is probably going to be the best option um so then i'll just give you that email and if you want to connect with me i would just ask you to put in the subject line uh, yes to fun. <laughs> yes uh -huh. to fun. And the email is two E's. So it's E E creative wellness at gmail.com. That's embracing expressions, creative wellness at gmail.com. All Just right. E, e creative wellness at gmail.com. It is Got in it. the comments in the Facebook thread. So if you're looking to reach out to Christine, please feel free to do so. And uh, if you're you, watching on, on YouTube or on listening on Connecting You to Radio, just check the show notes and, and the email will be in there as well. And I highly recommend reaching out to Christine because she is just absolutely one of the most beautiful souls I have ever come in contact with. She's got the most beautiful energy, totally uplifting. She definitely knows how to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> and she may even have her little helper Loki there with her. <laughs> he often is. Today he's adventuring on his own. <laughs> yes. And if anybody's looking to reach out to me, you can find me at connectingyoutoyou.com. I help you connect to the part of you that already knows how to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> 
So Christine, it was so much fun having you here today. I am so much you. fun too. Thank you for bringing me on and oh my gosh, having so much fun together. What a great Yay. Sunday so far. <laughs> right? Like what a great way to spend a Sunday morning, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I do this show, just because I love it. It's, it's a lot of fun and people seem to get some some good value out of it. So we'll keep doing it for a while. So I hope you'll be willing to come back and have more fun with us. Oh, I would love it. I absolutely would love it. <laughs> Beautiful. That's wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> you are so welcome. So everyone who is watching on Facebook, thank you all so much. We really appreciate you being here live with us. It always adds to the energy. <laughs> and uh, if you are watching on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe to my channel, share this with others. If you find it has been helpful to you, it might be helpful to others as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. So Christine, thank you so much. Thank you, Lisa. All right, everyone have a beautiful <laughs> week. Until next week, create for yourselves a great fun week. Woo. Awesome. Bye guys. Bye. <laughs>